Welcome fellow Stardust. Are you ready for a scare? I am so excited for this new Scream film. It just has to be good. And I'm even more excited to do my first review outside of the studio with this ride along review. You ready? Let's get it. Well, that was exactly what I thought it was going to be. And it was really, really enjoyable. There is a lot that I like about this film. There were some things that did bother me, but for the most part, they did an excellent job bringing this franchise back. Now, it is a bit more serious than the previous films, even a bit more serious than the first one. This film was a sort of passing of the torch to use a line that they used in the film and you know in doing that some things had to happen and without giving away too much it's just incredibly sad and in going into this film we're all hyped up to see our legacy characters kick some ass, Sydney, Gail, and Dewey and we definitely get that. That is completely satisfied. And it is a bit overwhelming at first because we really just care about our legacy characters. But after a while, I feel like we do get that opportunity to sort of connect to each of the new characters and learn a little bit about them and what their place is. There are some crazy connections to the first film. And while we're getting to know all of these new characters, you can't help but feel like you're re-watching the first Scream all over again. They use the term requel, which is something I actually hadn't heard of before. So it wasn't necessarily a reboot, not necessarily a sequel, but something in between. And yeah, when you're watching this, it just feels like they're doing Scream 1 all over again, but with the new stuff sprinkled throughout the film. And again, we have this crazy, weird, familial connection that I won't go into too much that is really driving Ghostface. And this particular familial connection allows for a character that we all loved to come back and it's just done perfectly. I heard rumors about this character coming back into the film and I was just thinking, how and why? but how they did it was pretty clever. Now, this is the first screen film not directed by the late and great Wes Craven, but I feel like the directors did a good job in showing respect to what he has already accomplished and didn't try to make this screen the biggest and baddest, best screen that there was with all kinds of crazy, you know, tricks and gimmicks and all of that. When you're watching the film, it does at times feel like a Wes Craven film. You know, we've got some similarities with the shots and the building of tension. But there is a distinction between Wes Craven's films and this one. Wes Craven, in all of his films, he was always having something going down. But in this film, it does kind of slow down just a little bit in the middle, which is something that I was afraid of in going into it, seeing that it was going to be two hours long. I was kind of skeptical, I was like an hour and 54 minutes, why'd they do that? So honestly, they could have probably shaved off about 30 minutes or more from the film. There was some slight dragging on here and there, but for the most part, the pacing was alright. 
Uh, but there was just a couple of scenes in the middle that were just kind of throwaway or could have happened a little bit quicker. But man, y'all, these kills were brutal. I loved every single one of them. Uh, it may not have been as funny as the other ones or it might be a little bit of a downer in some ways, but man, the kills are amazing. We got the knife going everywhere. Another thing that bothered me was the hospital, and that's all I can say about that, but when you watch it, you will probably know exactly what I'm talking about. It was really fun going back to old locations and finding all the Easter eggs throughout the film. It was meta on meta on meta once again. And I'm okay with it going a little bit more serious if they decide to keep going with this serious tone. I'm okay with that. But if they went back to their extra over-the-top comedy style, I would be down for that too. But with all these serious horror films, I see Scream 6 being serious also. And just like in all the rest of the films, we talk scary movies. And this time, we're talking about the newer films like Babadook, the Witch and Hereditary, all really serious slash elevated horror films. Overall, this was a really strong installment. I enjoyed seeing everybody again. I liked the new characters enough and I just really liked how they paid homage to Wes and his cinematic style. They took advantage of technology and gave us some really awesome slices and dices and the performances from everybody were top notch. The casting was a 10 out of 10. I feel like I don't want to say actors names because I went into this thinking something was going to happen that didn't happen and I feel like saying that person's name might spoil something for somebody else but just every single person was great. The leads were great. I'll be watching this one a couple more times before I give it my final rating, but as of right now, as I sit in the parking lot of the theater, I would give it four rainbow skulls out of five. Well, thank you for joining me for my first ride along review. I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do more videos like this or if you like my more structured reviews more or if you want me to do both, let me know that as well. In 2022, I want to play around with doing different kinds of things and I would love to hear y'all's feedback whenever you like something or don't like something. But I hope to do more of these ride along reviews and maybe sometimes for a film I can do a ride along as well as my in-studio reviews. Just let me know what y'all think and thank you again for joining me today. I appreciate y'all, Stardust. Peace. Okay.